Welcome to 2.5, Reason Using Properties from Algebra. Now again, I have no clue what this little picture means. Maybe it means that when you hear about reasoning and using properties from algebra, you want to run. Run away, probably. <laughs> but hopefully, after we go through this, you'll see how it really is useful uh, to you. So our essential question is, how can I use algebraic properties to form logical arguments. We want to reason here. We want to be able to be those that can think well, that allows us to make wise decisions and to live well, and as a result to feel good. <clears throat> That's our goal here. So let's think. Let's think well. Let's think about our thinking. And what I've done is taken all of these uh, algebraic properties of equality and also over here uh, later in the book and I put them together for you in your notes and these are algebraic properties of equality meaning that there's going to be an equal sign here there's two things that are equal to each other and uh, just so you understand what's happening here when you break it down hopefully it's a little bit easier to to see there are these algebraic properties of equality and over here these still are uh, properties of equality but specifically they are reflexive property symmetric and transitive okay and then these are just little examples of uh, types of reflexive properties and so forth so we'll get to that in just a minute but you're familiar with with this you've seen these things before the addition property of equality <clears throat> all it says is that if a equals b then you can add c to both sides basically you can say a plus c equals b plus c and so here's an example for example if you had uh, a equals 16 you could add 3 to both sides and say a plus 3 also equals 16 plus 3. Okay, you just add the same thing to both sides. That's all we're saying here. <clears throat> Subtraction is basically saying that we can subtract the same thing from both sides and it will still be an equation. So for example, if you had a equals 9, you could subtract 5 from both sides and it would still be an equation. It's not going to throw off the balance, in other words. So here, if I can balance my, my pen, uh, if I put some, whatever I put on the left-hand side, I need to put the, the same exact thing on the right-hand side in order to keep this balanced at the equal sign. So you can add the same thing from both sides, or you can subtract the same thing from both sides, and it's still going to be, uh, the equation will still be true. Same thing with multiplication. I can multiply both sides by the same thing. So for example, if I had z equals 6, I could multiply both sides by 2. So 2z will also equal 12, because I multiply both sides by 2. Or division property, I can divide both sides by the same number. Okay, all that stuff is, is now that you uh, now that I've walked through it, you're like, oh, okay, I know that stuff. No big deal. <clears throat> so what we're really doing is taking our algebra, what we know or familiar with, and you better know how to do these type of problems. Again, if you don't, go back to Khan Academy, type in multi-step equation or solving multi-step equations. Please do that. This is foundational. We are really using algebra as a means through which to help us to think. So make sure that you know the, the algebra. So what we're going to do here, we, we're going to solve for x here, writing the original equation. And how do I solve for x? Well, one way to do it <clears throat> is to move this negative 3x over to the left-hand side. How do I do that? By adding 3x to both sides. Because I have a negative 3x, make sure you add a positive uh, 3x. And that is the addition property of equality. I can do that with an equation. As long as it's the same thing on both that I'm adding on both sides, I'm good. And negative 3x plus 3x is 0x, or that turns 0 times x is 0. So in other words, that turns into an invisible 0. 
And on the left-hand side, I add uh, like terms. <clears throat> and so 2x plus 3x gives me 5x. What's next? Well, let's move the, the 5 over to the right side. Well, actually, hold on. So, so what I did do here is I simplified. Let me make sure to explain each step and also give the reason for why I can do that. So going from 2x plus 5 plus 3x, I can simplify it by adding these two. And really what I'm doing is commuting. We'll talk about that. I guess you already know that. Let's assume that you know. You can commute these two. Move the 3x over closer to the 2x. And so 2x plus 3x gives you 5x. I am adding like terms uh, here. <clears throat> Next step is I subtract uh, 5 from both sides. So that's the subtraction uh, property. Next step, I divide both sides by 5, and so that's the division property of equality. Okay, so you should definitely know how to know how to do that. Now what we're learning is the basis for being able to do that. So get familiar with these different properties of equality. <clears throat> Here's another one that you are already familiar with, but we just want to put a name to it. You substitute, you know that, that if A equals B, then A can be substituted for B in any equation or expression. Remember, equation is one that has an equal sign. Expression is one that does not have an equal sign. So substitute, whenever you see a B then, you can substitute the A in for the B. So instead of the B, you can put the A, or in the place of the B, you can put the A. So plug it in is a common vernacular way of saying the same thing. You are using the substitution property. Distributive property, <clears throat> you will remember that when you have a number, or it could be a variable, uh, up against a parentheses, you know that the operation between those two is multiplication. So you could put a little dot there for to represent multiplication and that you can distribute this A inside of the parentheses. And you can do, do a little uh, arcs there. So A times B and A times C. Just ignore that, that's uh, here on the uh, campus. So remember the saying, be fair, distribute everywhere. So if you're gonna distribute the A and multiply it times the B, it wouldn't be fair to give candy to Mr. B and not give candy to Mr. A. So make sure that if you give uh, A, I'm uh, sorry, to C, <coughs> Mr. C. So make sure that if you're gonna give A out to B, you also give an A to C. Okay, let's look at our example now in the book. This is on page 89. So how would I, <coughs> Uh, solve this equation and not just that but let's have the reason what's the basis for each step that you are are doing well we are given our first reason for being able to state this equation is that it's given to us and then what do we do to go from this first step down to the second uh, statement down to the second statement uh, we distributed you distributed the negative 4 inside of the parentheses you multiplied that negative 4 times 11x it gives you negative 44 and so forth and so that is the distributive property that's the basis that's the reason for being able to stay say this next equation and know that it definitely is true because we can use the distributive property on our first statement and then going down to the third statement uh, what we're doing is adding 8 to both sides, so that is the addition property of equality. And then the next step uh, to the next statement, uh, we are dividing both sides by negative 44. So that is the division property of equality. So please get accustomed to using those different properties of equality. Here's another one. <clears throat> they want us to be able to solve for a, yep. So here is a, an equation, and notice it has two variables. We, if they told us that a equals 5, we could plug in a, a 5 for a. Remember, that's the substitution property. 
But in this case, they're not doing that. In this case, they're saying, take this equation and solve this equation for A. In other words, get A by itself. So let's get rid of the 0 0.70, move that to the left-hand side. The operation between that and the parentheses is multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. So I'd be dividing both sides by 0 0.70. Okay, is that what they're doing? No, that's not what they did. I think that would have been easier to do that. But they didn't do that. <laughs> Instead, what they did was they distributed. Okay, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So they're doing, and that's a pretty gross statement, isn't it? <clears throat> but they're doing this a different way. So they're distributing the 0 0.7 inside the parentheses, and you get these numbers here. And then they are um, removing the, moving the 154 over to the left-hand side. Uh, through the subtraction property of equality. And it is true that the addition property and the subtraction property are, are different from uh, each other. The subtraction property is just uh, adding the negative, right? Adding the opposite. Uh, same idea here. So we are moving the, the, the positive 154 over to the left-hand side. And by uh, um, doing that to both sides, and then we are removing the uh, 0 0.7 uh, to the left by dividing both sides by 0 0.7, or negative uh, 0 0.7. So that's the division uh, property. Okay, you are ready. You are ready now to do these uh, exercises that you have here uh, in your notes, number one, number two, and also number three. So again, you know how to solve this. You should know how to solve that. So write down the steps, but also give me the reason. Don't just give me the steps and the statements. Make sure that you are also writing the reasons on the right-hand side. You have to have the reasons, and your reasons will be one of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, one of these six different properties there. And for number three, this is also a literal equation, meaning that there are more than one variable uh, in this equation. And they're asking to solve this equation for B. So I want to get B by itself. So it's very similar to what we had done <coughs> here with uh, number three, where you leave the R as a variable and you just move the numbers. Okay? But in this situation, it's a little bit different. It might seem a little bit strange that I, I need to move this H. Not only do I need to move the, the one half, I also need to move the H. So how would I do that? Let me walk you through this to it might help you. Uh, if we have area equals one half base times height, you know that there's multiplication going on between the one half and the variable B and the variable H, right? So since you're probably skittish about moving letters, let's uh, pretend that the A is three and that the h is four, okay? So if you had three equals one half uh, b times four, how would you solve for b here? Well, first you can get rid of the four by multiplying it times the inverse, or you could think of it as by dividing both sides by four. And so here I'm multiplying by the inverse of four, which is one quarter. And one quarter times three, you can put a one underneath that and multiply across the top. We've done that before. And so that's going to give you three over four. And so now I have three fourths equals one half B. Now how do I get rid of the one half? And I multiply by the reciprocal, uh, which is uh, two over one. And you know that uh, here, the fraction bar, think of that as division. So two divided by two is one. And these are one, so these all turn into an invisible one. I'm left with just B. And then I multiply across the top and across the bottom. Okay, so this is what it would look like if the A was a three and if the H was a four. You do the same thing uh, with the variables, same idea. So how do you move the H over to the left-hand side? Divide both sides by H, or like I said, multiply by the reciprocal. What is the reciprocal of H? It is one over uh, H. And then how do you get rid of the one half? You, you multiply by the reciprocal, uh, which is two, or you can think of it as just multiplying both sides by two. 
Okay, so hopefully that'll uh, do not come to me and say, oh, I didn't know how to do it, too many letters. I've given you enough help. You should be able to do it now. So go ahead and pause the video and do those three there in your notes. And hey, while you're at it, <clears throat> you can also do on the back side. So make sure that you know on the back side of the 2.5 notes are some more problems for 2.5. And this is to name the property of equality that the statement illustrates. Oh, that's right. I do have some more. I know I have some more stuff to teach you. So what we need to do before we do that, I need to teach you these uh, other properties of equality. Okay, These are in your book, but I've condensed them here for you. So there are three. I know it looks like a whole bunch of stuff going on, but all there are is just three. Three different uh, properties of equality. There is the reflexive property. And all that is saying is just that A equals A. And you can plug in a number there if you want to, that uh, 4 equals 4, 12 equals 12. I mean, that's like, duh, you knew that. But we need to put a name to this. When you have this the, a thing and the same thing, then you know for sure that they're always going to be equal. And what is the basis for that? What is the property? It is the reflexive property. So one way of thinking about it is when little a looks himself in a mirror, what does he see? He sees his own reflection. He sees reflected uh, a. Now this is this is true for uh, real numbers. It's also true for segment length. So it's a real number that represents a length. So you know that a b uh, that means a whole lot in geometry. That means uh, the length of segment a b. And the length of segment AB equals the length of segment AB. Duh, we know that. So just to remind you that you can use the reflexive property for lengths of segments. You can also use it for the measure of an angle. So when you see the, the, the uh, lowercase and italics M here, you know that means the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle A. And so both of those are numbers. And so those uh, are also can be uh, included in the reflexive property of equality. Okay, So when little a looks at himself in the mirror, what does he see reflected? He sees himself. The symmetric property of equality means that if we are told that a equals b, well then we can say, we can switch these and say that b equals a. Again, you know that, but let's put a name to it. That's called the symmetric property of equality. And so again, we can switch sides of the, we can flip, not, not flip, flip is like upside down, but switch, we can switch the different sides of the uh, equal sign uh, here. And we can do that also for segment length, and we can do that for angle measures, because both of these are numbers also. Now the transitive property, hopefully they're not going to interrupt me. I should buzz the office and tell them to be quiet. Don't make announcements while I'm making this video. Not that this video is that important though compared to the entire school, but the transitive property simply says that if A equals B and B equals C, then we can say that A equals C based on the transitive property. When you see transitive, I'd like for you to think of transit. So you are transiting, you transit from the start. I'm starting here at A and I'm transiting, taking the bus, moving from A through B. So I'm going down through B to C. So it's the transitive property that allows us to say that if A equals B and B equals C, then I can transit from A all the way down to C and A equals C. That is your transitive property. So let me show you some examples of that. Here on page 99 in your textbook, example number four, we are told that the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle three that is given to us. And then uh, we can